This little box came in the mail today from China. I ordered this a couple weeks ago. Let's take a look and see what's in here. Well, I first found out about this device by watching Amateur Logic TV, which I always do. And this was on episode 69, a recent episode. And Peter had a segment on this little device. It looked like a handy tool for the workbench. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try one of these. For the price, you can't really go wrong. So you can always search Amateur Logic TV episode 69 if you want to see Peter's segment on this device for a little more information. They include a little thank you note in the box here and uh, would like a good rating. That's what this is all about. And saying to contact them if there's any problems. There's no instructions in the box, but uh, it's not that difficult to figure this device out, although uh, it would be nice to have some instructions there with it. So we'll go ahead and take it out of the wrapper here. And I have seen a few other videos on this device, so it doesn't look too complicated to figure out, I guess. I think we'll be able to figure out what's going on here. At least it's packaged very well, and it arrived in good condition. It did take a couple of weeks to get from China in a package, but uh, looks like the quality is pretty good too here. Just looking it over quickly, uh, it's all put together good. The circuit board looks of good quality, I would say. And this is where I purchased it. From uh, the buyer I chose was Elect Buy, Elect Buy, and he had a good rating. But there are several others selling these devices, so you might want to compare a little bit and check out prices. This cost me a little over twenty dollars, twenty dollars and forty-four cents, I think it was. So I figured I couldn't go wrong for that. Um, but let's find out here if it's working or what the deal is. Let's put it to the test. We'll find some components here. It has a 9-volt battery clip, connect to a 9-volt battery, and the socket to insert the components. So we'll go ahead and hook up the battery here, and let's, uh, we'll just power it up here without any components, see what uh, the screen shows. Oh, it looks like it's working so far. And testing no unknown or damaged components so that means uh, there's just nothing in the socket so let me go and look uh, let's start out with some transistors here we'll look in my transistor parts box see if we can come up with some we'll start out with the PNP 29 uh, or 2N uh, 3906 which is uh, just a general PNP transistor spread the legs apart a little bit here so it'll fit in the socket now from what I've seen before I use the first three pins in the socket here in the lower half so we'll try that and see what happens now, the display you might have noticed also showed the battery voltage it's kind of neat I don't know if you got a good battery or not hooked up basically it's uh, on off buttons here uh, just a test button and an off button the test just means turn it on and yes it shows me it's a PNP you can see the pinout of the transistor shows you a diagram and the turn on voltage there 640 millivolts pretty common on a transistor and we'll turn it off and let's try an NPN type a 2N2222 another standard transistor we'll see what this shows on here and we'll insert it this way with the flat side facing towards me I don't think it matters in the socket it'll just uh, show up on the screen whichever way you put it in and we'll turn it on and let's see what we got here it's testing right now and there it shows me an NPN transistor 703 mobile and gives some other specs of the transistor okay let's try this device now this is an unknown device to me. I just picked it out of the bin here. I'm not sure. I didn't look up the number on it. I'm not sure what it is. Let's put it in the circuit here and see what shows up. And here we go. Testing. Yeah, it shows me it's a thyristor and another form of an SCR, in other words. Uh, silicon controlled rectifier and it did show me the pinout there the cathode anode and the gate 
So let's pick out another transistor here at random. See what we got. We'll pick out one of these metal can devices. These are a little older here. I've had these around a long time. And uh, I'm not even going to look on the, on the writing on the transistor to see what it is. We'll just test it out here. And did I mention uh, the battery does not come with d this device. You have to supply your own 9 volt battery. There it shows me. It's an NPN type transistor. It shows me the emitter, base, and collector in that order connected in the socket. So good so far. This is looking pretty handy. Let's try an LED now. Light emitting diode. We'll see what that shows up on the screen. So we'll go ahead and straighten the leads out a little bit here so I can get it in the socket. And this little lever, you press that down to lock it in the socket. It locks the device in. Turn it on. And drum roll, please. And you'll notice the LED blinks a little bit there. When I was first tested, you could see it light up. Shows me it's a diode, which it is. And the LED is a light emitting diode. Good so far. Okay, we got a silicon diode here. We'll try that. We'll put that in between pins 1 and 3, so it should indicate pins 1 and 3 on the screen. See what happens. See if we got a good diode here. This is another diode. And there it shows. Pins 1 and 3 it's connected to and the direction of the diode. So we have a good diode here according to this. Now I'd like to try a resistor. I got a brand new 33k ohm resistor here in the package. It, uh, it was in one of my resistor bins. Let's just break that out of the package and we'll test this resistor out. We'll see if it measures resistance. I'll go ahead and put it between terminals 1 and 3 again. I think 1 and 2 would work okay also. It would just show that on the screen, but it's easier to fit it in between 1 and 3. So let's turn it on and see what we've got. There you can see it shows a resistor. 32.9 K ohms, which is uh, well within tolerance. Now we'll go ahead and uh, try a capacitor. I have these. Uh, capacitors here and we'll just see what this shows. Alright, we'll go ahead and test this capacitor now which uh, according to the writing on the capacitor is a 330 picofarad. We'll see what the tester shows it as and uh, hopefully it's within tolerance. Then our 324 picofarad shows the diagram of a capacitor so that's well within tolerance. Uh, looks like uh, we're checking okay here. Now we'll try an inductor, which is basically a little coil of wire. Let's see what this inductor shows. It's testing. It'll show me resistance of 2.2 ohms, and it is a 0 0.01 millihenry inductor. It shows a diagram between pins 1 and 3. Yep, looks good to me. Now we'll try a short piece of solder for the heck of it here, just uh, between terminals 1 and 3 going to show me a little bit of resistance. We'll see if this will measure that short piece of wire resistance. Yes, it shows me it's a resistor 0.3 ohms, which I would say is probably pretty darn close here. Well, for the price, I'm really amazed at what this can do. It can test several different types of components, not only transistors, and it will test other types of transistors that I haven't showed you in this video. It'll do NFETs, JFETs, all that uh, from what I've seen. So uh, I think uh, this is going to be a useful little tool on the workbench here. Well, anyhow, thanks for watching this video. Hope that uh, maybe helped you out to uh, give you an idea what this little device can do. So 7-3 and check out my other videos. I'm Radio Ham Guy on YouTube.